Hello there. Fixing my hair here. How are you guys? What's up with these bangs? This is a new thing. <laughs> How is everyone today? Well, um, let's see. I want to tell you to get a piece of paper and a pen if this is a topic that you're interested in because I'm gonna give you some information that you may wanna write down. So get your pen, get your paper. Hi, Debbie, how are you? And um, what, I, what I was looking at recently was this website that was called Healthcare Awareness Weeks and it gave every, um, every day in the year, every week in the year, every month in the year, it just went you know, January down to December, all the different healthcare awareness, days, weeks, months, so interesting. And just, gosh, gave me a whole lot of great ideas. And so today, is, is today the eighth? Actually, I don't even know what day, oh no, it's the ninth. Okay, so yesterday, October 8th, was World Hospice and Palliative Care Day. Pretty interesting. And since some of you know that my mom died two months ago, so this is kind of um, a subject that's been recent for me. And I just think is such an amazing subject. Um, just that transition to heaven and death itself is, I mean, to be with my mom, and I was also with my dad 13 years ago. My whole family, we were with my dad, and all my siblings, we were with my mom. So I feel honored, blessed, all of that, to have been able to have been there during that, what I didn't realize until I was actually there experiencing it, would be such a holy experience like birth just just like birth and so or not just like i mean very different i don't know they're both holy experiences <laughs> you know death is different though because we know what this child is coming into right in birth in death it's wow we don't know yet and, and so a lot of things are happening in our own minds as we're in this experience with this person. Um, could be fears, could be, um, you know, just just our own mortality, you know, thinking about those things and, and not knowing. We do know what this child's coming into though, pretty much. So, so it's different in that way, um, but, but yes, holy, holy nonetheless, no, nonetheless. So anyway, I just, I did some research. I, I pulled from about probably six different articles that I found on the subject, and I just wanted to tell you about it. And, um, you know, I think, and, and I thought this before I experienced it twice, but, you know, when it comes to being around someone that's dying, it it's, can be scary and like you don't you know you don't know what to say you don't know what to do you don't know how to act um, you know it's just kind of this weird thing and so that's a lot of what is going to be going on with people that are <clears throat> in this situation whether they're the person that is making their transition out of this earth or the family that are around them or the caretaker too. So um, I thought, interesting, I've got some notes here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be reading back and forth here a little bit, but, um, or just, you know, looking at the notes. One report that I read said almost all hospices, now I don't know if this is the case with our little small town here. Um, I'd love to know if you know, but almost all hospices now have aromatherapists for end of life care. I thought that was really, really cool. There are studies about it <clears throat> and how, you know, people that are dying have reacted to them. It, you know, again, this can be, it can be a traumatic time. It can be stressful, particularly if it's a child. 
uh, can be physically demanding, lifting and turning and just all of that stuff physically that's um, on, the, on the caregiver. Um, very, it can be exhausting, just, just emotionally exhausting and difficult. And so the main goal in using essential oils during this time is to reduce stress for everyone involved, to increase the feelings, um, the well-being of the patient, and uh, also the caregiver. And also for terminally ill patients to, um, you know, to, to cope with their situation. Um, the oils can relieve fears and alleviate mental suffering and stuff like that. So, you know, our sense of smell is very acute. And when we are dealing with patients or um, people that are sick or people that are making that transition to heaven, the smells and the places that we might be, like a hospital, for instance, hi Cassandra, you know, it, it doesn't always smell very good. And so it, that just can affect the atmosphere in the room and it can change moods, you know, when you walk in or, you know, from wherever you were um, or just for that person that's, that's dying. So um, on the studies that have been done out there, it has uh, using essential oils, whether, and we're talking about maybe diffusing in the room, maybe massaging onto the skin topically, um, but that it has, it decreases the stress, it lowers levels of anxiety, it, there's a reduction in depression and in pain or discomfort, there's a reduction in constipation, because you know, when you've got someone that's lying there a lot, then there can be issues with that. There's improvement in sleep. So, wow, that's a lot of great stuff that, that happens during that time. So, um, you know, when someone is lying in a bed a lot or maybe all the time, they can have irregularity with bowels and they can, you know, maybe not have peaceful sleep or they can have interruption in just normal blood and lymph circulation because they're not moving. So those are some of the things that, you know, we think about. So one, one article I was reading about was just talking about this lady that would go in, she was from the Denver area, and she would go into these situations and she would, you know, take her essential oils with her. And, you know, sometimes the families didn't know anything about essential oils. So she would take with her a couple of reference books and just show them to the families and just um, let that help explain what essential oils are and how they can help and, um, then some of the other things to do that she would do that she would help the the family members do also was just you know gentle massage on you know the feet and the hands and even the face sometimes um you know and some some people are so in such a fragile state that you really have to use a very light touch you also might want to be using um carrier oils with the essential oils so it's just diffused out a little bit and you know in terms of and, and we I did some of that with my mom now 13 years ago with my dad I didn't know anything about essential oils but this time I sure did and I had I had my little bag of the oils and you know just opening them up in a little hospital room that you know they're not very big rooms um just just opening them up and putting them on me was permeating the room in a good way and, and everybody my siblings and the nurses that would walk in they they loved it and <laughs> they thought it smelled great and stuff so um just doing that you know you don't even need a diffuser sometimes but um th and then i also was putting uh, oils on her feet and on her hands and like on her forehead and on the crown of her head and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you just, every situation is going to be different. Maybe it's somebody that used essential oils in the past and maybe that person that's making their transition has some favorites that, you know, so these are some of the things that you would find out about, um, as you went into a situation like that. Um, 
And if if that and, and if that person is still you know aware, you can just let them smell and see which ones they like. And so I'm going to give you a list of oils for different purposes here in a few minutes. But but if that person is aware, you know the ones they like are the ones to use. You know if they really are attracted to something, then that's just going to help them and ease um, and help help their comfort. You know, the other thing is that I thought that I read about and that I just remember so vividly was even though I'd been at my dad's death, um, that again was 13 years ago, so it's been a while. You know, you get into these situations. My mother had, my mother was experiencing dementia, first of all, and had been for a few years. She still knew who we were, but she just was confused. It was, you know, it'd come in and out, and she would be confused about, you know, just everything else, pretty much. And um, um, she, so, you're, you, when you're in the midst of it, you, you need direction and so many people gave us direction that I was so thankful for because you're just like, you know, we had a kind of situation, she had a massive hemorrhagic stroke and so there for a while it was, they were asking us questions, the nurses were like, what do you want to do? And we're all, we're all trying to drive there and it, it was just kind of crazy and so there were a lot of people that were saying, okay, this is what's happening, this is what you should do. Probably, you know, you got to make your own decisions, but um, the family that's, that's, you know, in the midst of this, they need direction. They want direction. We, I just remember being so thankful for people giving us direction and telling us, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is how this is going to look and stuff like that. So, so when we would have a nurse come in and just talk to us about, you know, what would be good for her and how we could talk and just all these different things. So to be able to go in there and to just give a little direction to the people that are surrounding the patient um, is a wonderful thing. And because they feel helpless, they feel helpless. They don't know if there's anything they can do, but there's so much they can do. Just the so, so this is just, it's like a tool for this beautiful time, this beautiful time of transition. So you can take a diffuser in, you can show them about the oils, you can show them how to massage the hands and the feet, and it's not complicated at all. I mean, it's just not anybody can do that. So I want to give you a few oils for a few different reasons. And let's see here. So, all right, here's the first, uh, the first one is for discomfort. So if someone's just not feeling good, they're feeling a lot of discomfort, these are the oils that I've come across in all these different articles. Um, all right, so if you got your pencil or pen, lavender, clary sage, marjoram, black pepper, Roman and German chamomile, peppermint, Yarrow, now yarrow you'll find in blends that we have, geranium and pine. So the, those are the ones listed for pain, for discomfort. The ones listed for digestive relief, and some of these are going to be, you know, ones that we already use in general for those things. Of course, digest, this was not just young living oriented, this was all of, um, essential oils just kind of all over. So although the only ones I would use are Young Living. Okay, for sure. But digestive relief, of course we have Digize. Now this is awesome. Oh, you oh you did work as a hospital. Oh gosh, yeah. That's cool, Valerie. I love um, that you've done that. I'm trying to look at the rest. Okay, I'm glad you're enjoying this because um, I do think it's just huge. All right, digestive relief, you know, People are just laying in their beds. So fennel, orange, ginger, rosemary, juniper, and cypress. I'd be rubbing that on the belly and on the bottom of the feet too. Uh, best oils for anxiety, stress, and depression. That can be big. That can be for the people, that the family too. So lavender, neroli, rose, sandalwood, jasmine, bergamot, 
thyme, pettigrain, geranium, orange, clary sage, melissa, patchouli, and ylang ylang. You guys, you can go back over this and, and get those if you want. Ruby, I worked hospice for a while back. Wish I would have had this information. Yes, I know what you're saying. Don't we all? We live and we learn and we do better, right? <laughs> okay, and then here are the best oils for fear and despair. Certainly can be something all people, the patient or the or the family that are around can be can be dealing with. Um, fears of death and mortality for the people that are watching this person make their transition, right? Okay, so these, there are about eight, nine, it looks like, frankincense, pettigrain, Ylang Ylang, Lavender, Geranium, Bergamot, Marjoram, Neroli, and Sandalwood. Lisa, you know you diffused oils when your sister was on hospice. Yeah, I bet you did, Lisa. But that was awesome. Um, now, essential oils, you know, we have essential oils from the Bible. And this can bring a real spiritual connection to a hospice experience. I mean, how... How beautiful is that? Frankincense can symbolize one's faith, one's spiritual tradition. Um, you know, if it's somebody that just loved the Lord and went to church all the time and all of that kind of stuff, um, frankincense can be wonderful. I mean, my gosh, you know, everybody knows about frankincense. Hyssop can be a great for helping with breathing. Um, it's also symbolic of the last plant oil given to Jesus on the cross before he died. So that's a big deal. Sandalwood can deepen meditation, spiritual contemplation, and ease anxiety. And for those who just love nature, who doesn't, I guess, but any flower can bring that, that, that drive for contemplation. Um, Rose, lavender, sage, geranium, basil, ylang ylang, and patchouli are the ones that were listed for that. Lavender in the last days of life massaged into the palm of the hand can calm the nervous system. And rose over the heart can calm the nervous system and has an aroma connected to transitions and emotional life. So those are some really good ones. Now this is, this is interesting too. You know, there can be that time where, and I, and I found that time happen with my father, and I found, found that time happen with my mother, and it was just like, like I just felt, I just sensed it was the time to say things like, you know, it's okay, mom, you can, you can go, we're gonna, we're okay, it's okay. Hi, Megan, hi, Star. And the oils that are used to encourage detachment from the body during that transition to heaven are jasmine, rose, geranium, neroli, and lavender. And I love this line that this person wrote in this research I was looking at. She says, these oils have a gentle persuasion, almost a quiet invitation to release rather than a demand to let go. Even frankincense, frankincense, which is usually forceful in pushing a situation to resolution, can be soft and caring around a deathbed. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there were a few oils they said not to use during certain terminal situations. So it, with cancer, they were basil, fennel, and nutmeg. With estrogen-dependent cancer, they were fennel, lemongrass, melissa, citronella, bergamot, and eucalyptus. With cardiac disease, it was peppermint. With epilepsy, it's rosemary, peppermint, and basil. With hepatic disease, that would be basil, juniper, cinnamon, and clove. And with renal disease, cinnamon and clove. And that, that I did not get that from Young Living, so but I still, I, I saw it in several different places. So um, again, and it, it, as they said, that list can change depending on where you're getting your information from. Um, the last little piece I wanted to tell you is that even in the post-mortem time, once they've taken their last breath and they've moved on, 
there is that time of cleaning the body. And uh, in a hospital, they do this whole cleaning process of the body to prepare it for the funeral home to come get the body. And so during that time, and you know, again, this would be just up to the family's wishes, but you know, you could take some lavender. They suggest you could take some lavender, mix it in a carrier oil, and just rub that all over the body um, to prepare for the funeral home. So that's all I've got for you on that subject. I, I think it's such a, um, I never thought I'd be talking about this like this, but you know, I've been through it now and it is such, it is such an amazing experience to go through. Um, again, it's a holy experience and it is a privilege to be with somebody as they make that transition. And, and to help them make that transition in a beautiful way. I mean, how perfect, how perfect is that? So, all right guys, I'm so glad that you're here today. It's good to see your faces. I can see your little faces, not in real life, just your pictures here. So it's good to see you. Um, take care and have a great day and I will talk to you soon, bye.